Hello everyone, today we're talking about this business called love. Sometimes it's easy to love people, especially if they're nice people. Other times there's, there's a challenge to love tough people, but if you've had some practice at it, it's not too bad. But there are times in life that we have to love some people that are just so difficult and it's near impossible to do. As you aim to draw closer to God, you will encounter this love challenge. So today we're going to look at why do we have to even love people? Why bother? Why does God make a commandment for us to love people? And how do we overcome this challenge? Hi, my name is Rachel Anderson, and I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about this business called love. We're going to look at the whole point about loving other people, the commandment to love God first, why is that commandment first? Why not love people first? And how do we overcome this challenge? So the point of loving other people, is it just so that we can all get along in peace and they'll be nice to us and we'll be nice to them back? Well, this doesn't really work as an answer because Jesus says to us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, that we should bless those people that curse you, do good to those people that hate you, and pray for those people that despitefully use you and persecute you. So it's not loving nice people so they love us back. He wants us to love the difficult, challenging people. And um, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, the very next verse, Jesus tells us, So that you may be children of God, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. On the good. In the King James Version, it says, on the just and the unjust. So what we're seeing here is God is asking us to be loving to other people because he wants us to be like him. So we're not loving people for their sakes, like if they deserve it. We're loving people for our sakes because God wants us to be his children. He wants us to love and to be merciful like he is. In Luke chapter 6, verse 36, it says to be merciful as your father is merciful. So this seems to be impossible. If you're thinking, this is just impossible, and you're probably thinking of one or two people that you have a love challenge with, you would be absolutely right. It is impossible. But God wants us to be perfect. He says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But we're encountering this difficulty. We're supposed to be perfect. We're supposed to be loving like God, and yet we can't. Most of us will say, I'm just human. I'm not perfect. But why is God asking us to be perfect if we can't be perfect? So what we see is that Jesus is setting us up to see that we need God. Because the scripture says, with God, all things are possible. So what we need to do is to look at the kind of love that we're talking about. There are four kinds of love that C.S. Lewis mentions in his book, The Four Kinds of Love. They are storge, philia, eros, and agape. And they are for love of family, love of friends, romantic love, and love of God, which is called unconditional love. So as we aim to draw closer to God, He's asking us to love one another as He has loved us. The kind of love we're talking about is the unconditional type of love. The famous scripture, John uh, 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So what we see here in this simple scripture, and so famous that you can just dismiss some really key points, is that when God said he loved us, he took action. And he gave his only son to whosoever. Whosoever means the just and the unjust, the good and the evil. Which one of us, wherever we are, if we believe in his son, we'll have a chance to have everlasting life. So we see a demonstration of this kind of uh, unconditional love. I know the first time I heard about God asking us to love people that hate you and persecute you and despitefully use you, I thought, my goodness, <laughs> why would we want to engage in this thankless exercise? But that is what God's asking us. So how can, how can we do it? We can only do it with God. The key is this, in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus tells the disciples, with God all things are possible. 
The key is with God, Jesus is setting us up to see that we can't be perfect and we can't do the impossible and yet we are supposed to be perfect and do the impossible. He is showing us our need for God. The greatest miracle is that God wants us to love like He does. How can we possibly do that? The only way we can do it, it's scarcely... First, let me just say, God is showing us that He wants us to be merciful and to be just to the just and the unjust and those people that are difficult in your life. And it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die for the nice people. He didn't die for the ones that are doing good and, you know, loving one another people the best they can. He died for sinners, for you and me. If early in verse 6 and 7 of the same chapter in Romans, it talks about how scarcely people die for someone else or even for a good person. Then it says how incredulous it is for someone to die for ungodly or wicked people. But that's what Jesus did to demonstrate the love of God, this unconditional love that we're talking about, agape love. So when we run into this challenge, we have to remember we cannot abandon the love challenge because as we make the decision to draw closer to God, to abide in Him, to abide in His love, we're responsible for loving other people. We can't abide in God if we're not going to follow His commandments. In John chapter 15, verse 10, it says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So we see the, this exchange that God comes in and lives in us and lives and moves and has His being in us. <laughs> and we live in Him and we live and move and have our being in Him. And so unless we keep His commandments, we won't get these rewards. One of the benefits also of abiding in Him is we will bear much fruit. We will ask what we desire and it will be done. That's an impossible feat. But he's telling us if we abide in him, we can accomplish the impossible. If we abide in his love and have his love in us, we can do that impossible, unconditional type of love and love other people who may have failed us, who are difficult, but we can do it with God. So why would it matter at all? Well, God is the one with the supernatural power. We think we can fabricate some supernatural, but He's the one with it. So you might spend time with yoga or meditations or whatever and trying really hard to love people. Eventually you'll burn out, you'll be frustrated, you'll feel overwhelmed, and you'll find that you can't do it. And you might explore some options. You might say, well, I'll just ignore this person or I'll just give them a hard time because they've given me a hard time. None of these will work and you'll end up you know, you might have health problems along the way, sleepless nights, and eventually you'll develop things like food allergies and you don't know where they came from. It's because we have challenges in life that we can only overcome with God. So I want to transition to the next um, point that we're looking at today, this commandment that God has for us to love people. First, we talked about that we're loving them for our sakes because He wants us to be His children. Well, then the next question is, if loving people is so impo important, why does God insert himself to say that the first commandment is to love God? Why is there so much emphasis on loving God? I want to look at two scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9, it says, You shall love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. And these words shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you go for a walk, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall bind them upon the post of your house and on your gates. These words are so important that he tells us we're to talk about them all the time. Teach it, teach it to our children. It's like there's so much emphasis and loving God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. Then another scripture that I'll look at is um, Psalm 119, verse 105. It says, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The Bible is 
just fraught with um, the importance of God's word all throughout. You know, he exalts his word even above his name. Um, and I won't go into all of them, but I'll challenge you to read, read your Bible and you'll encounter so many of the scriptures. So the key that we're seeing is God wants us to love him first, then he wants us to love people second. So there is a, a key here that tells us that in order to love people, we must first receive that supernatural, unconditional God type of love. And we can only get it from God. He loves us first. And when we accept Jesus Christ as the sacrifice for our sins, our sins is essentially disobedience to God's commandments, which the two greatest commandments to love God and to love people are the fulfillment of the whole set of laws that God wants us to keep in order to to be good people, be good citizens, what he asks of us. So when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, Jesus gave his life to pay the price for us. And so secondly, he asked us to love others. So we accept Jesus as the, the price, and then God comes in, the Holy Spirit comes in and pours out his supernatural love into us. And now we have that love and that we can give it. The challenge is many people stop at loving God. I love God so much. I love Jesus and I'll worship him. But they cut themselves off from the second commandment to love others. But we have to remember that whosoever loves fulfills the law. And that's what Jesus is asking us to do. He's telling us to love one another. And there's another scripture that says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? So it's important for us to remember that we must obey the commandment that Jesus gave us, where he says, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. It's time for us to make the choice to love God. This is what he told the Israelites. Listen to the importance back when we read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9. Talk about it all the time. Know it by heart when you're in your house. Teach it to your children when you go for a walk, when you lie down, rise up. I can't stress enough the importance that God puts on his word. So this is why we need to do this impossible task. We can't do it, and yes, God commands us to do it. And this is why we need a savior. You know, the Christian religion talks about having a savior. Jesus gave his life as a ransom, as the, the punishment that we should have gotten. And he paid that price so that we can have eternal life. That's another supernatural benefit that we get from accepting what God has done for us through his son, Jesus. So now we're faced with no good options and we have, we're cornered. <laughs> We have to love people, yet we can't. It's difficult. So the only answer is to accept Jesus and do what he's asked us to do. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. It says in Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Um, it says, Owe no man anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. So Jesus has given us this commandment, and you might think, well, there's some people you really don't need in your life. You just as soon cut them off, ignore them, have nothing to do with them. But as a child of God, we are members of each other. We need each other, and we need what each one supplies. Just like a body needs each joint and parts of the body to function, properly the body of Christ needs all its members. Otherwise, we'll have schism, which is a word that means division or disunity. We are called to be one body. And we need what each person brings, what God has placed in them. And this is covered so well in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. It's so serious an issue that the Bible says that when one member suffers, we all suffer. Think about that. So hearing Jesus' words but not doing them, just like he's asked us this commandment, he said, love one another as I have loved you. So when we hear his words and don't do them, we are like the people that build their house upon the sand. And when the storm came, it blew away their house. So it is rather necessary for us to love one another, especially if when we are aiming to draw closer to God, we will come up against this love challenge and it will be difficult to overcome, but we can do it. We can do so, we can overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Jesus came and gave himself as the sacrificial lamb. 
that fulfills the law, what he came and did for us. But then he gives us a commandment to love one another. So we need to make sure that our testimony that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, our testimony is that we learn to love like the son of God. We learned obedience to his commandment, what he asked us to do. He did his part. We must now do our part. So just as the Holy Spirit poured out the love of God to us, we must pour out that same kind of love to others, but we must first receive it. That's, that's the key. We must abide in His love, and when we abide in His unconditional love for us and realize that no matter what we've done wrong, He loves us unconditionally. We must receive that love. And when we have that, then we have it to give to others. When they've done whatever they've done, they've disappointed you or not met your expectations, you'll have that unconditional love to give. Many years ago, I remember I was in a situation and I was puzzled with a relationship issue and I just could not understand why it was so difficult for this person to love. And I heard in a still small voice, the Lord said to me, Rachel, people can't give you what they don't have. And I was stunned by it. I was, you know, I was just like a fairly new Christian and I was learning to hear from God. And when he said, people can't give you what they don't have, I realized, oh, this person does not have the unconditional love of God in them. And therefore, they don't have the capacity to give it. So we, we need to ask God to help us in our love challenge. And as we aim to draw near to others, Near, near to God and near to others, we become one in unity. And we want to remember we are to owe no man anything but to love him. The Holy Spirit has poured out that love in us, and we are walking miracle potential people. The, the thing is, if we begin to take God's word as he's told us, and not let his words fall to the ground, then our words won't, won't fall to the ground. We want to uh, prophesy and say things, but he's already asked us, something key, something so important, and if we're not doing it, we're letting his words fall to the ground, then why should our words go any further? So let's take what he said to us, let's take it to heart, and to love other people, let's draw from the spring that he's given us, the love inside us, let's pour it out to others, and keep drawing closer to the Lord. So I want to pray this prayer, Father, please forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let your kingdom come in our hearts as darkness covers the earth all over right now. May we shine brightly with your love as never, ever before. Let us abandon all fear and misgivings and love unconditionally with the gift of the love you, you poured out in us. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. I want to also offer this prayer of salvation. If you have never accepted Jesus, as your Lord and your Savior, the one that's paid the price for you, this is a prayer that you can pray. Jesus, I recognize that I need you. I want to live my life through you. And I want to walk in supernatural love. I accept your supernatural gift of eternal life. I give you my heart. And I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you for the unconditional love that you showed me. Now show me how to love like you. In your name, I pray. I thank you for watching, and I thank you for um, visiting my channel and my blog, keepdrawingcloser.com, and I hope to see you on the next video. God bless.